Good morning, fourth grade. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make the anticipated bottle. So we took a break from this to do our tiger, so now we are jumping back in. So you're gonna need a paper, and we're gonna just start with a pencil and an eraser today. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is write our name. We always write our name on the back with pencil, and I like to write lightly in case I need to use this. I'm also gonna write my class code. I'm gonna flip it over, and I'm ready to begin. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to um, try to decide where we're gonna start. Okay, let's start at the very top with our cork. So at the very top of our paper, like real, I'm talking close to the edge here, we're gonna make an ellipse. An ellipse is like a hot dog shape, okay? So it's like a smushed pancake shape. And I'm going back and around and around and around lightly until I really like it. And then I'm gonna push down and make it a little bit darker so you can see my ellipse. So that's kind of like how I like to practice shapes that I'm making. Um, for the first time on my paper. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is make the rest of our cork by making a line that comes down and in. I like to have it kind of coming towards the middle a little bit so it looks like it's squished inside of the bottle. And look how much room I still have on my paper. So I'm just working at the top right now. So my line's coming down on both sides of my ellipse. And then I'm gonna make a curve. There's actually another ellipse but you can't see it. If my cork was a glass, I'd be able to see the whole ellipse, but since you can't see through a cork, I only see one side of my lip, so it's just a curve like that. So that is our cork that is sticking out of our bottle. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is make the lip of our bottle that the cork is sitting on. So the, the lip of the bottle is actually another ellipse. So ellipses are come in handy when you're drawing things like bottles. So this ellipse goes through, so we're only gonna see part of it. So we're gonna start here, a little bit up from the bottom, and come out and around and back in. So there's actually another ellipse that you just can't see the back of because it's behind the cork. All right, so now that we have that, we can make it a little bit more 3D looking by making another ellipse that kind of comes out and around. This time it just kind of attaches to the side. So it's another curve at the bottom. This part's optional. You don't have to do that part if you don't want to. It just makes it look a little bit more 3D. Okay, so now we have the top of our bottle finished. The rest of our bottle is glass, so you can see through it, which is kind of cool. So the first thing we're gonna do for this is we're gonna start a little bit in from the bottom, or from the edges, I should say, make a little line that comes down. That's where the neck of the bottle is, and then it's gonna to start to come out and make the shape. I'm gonna make my bottle just kind of like a normal bottle shape. You can make your bottle round, kind of like a circle. You can make your bottle have wobbly edges. You can make your bottle more of a triangle shape. This part is totally up to you. So either way, you're gonna start from that lip, from that neck, come out and create one side of your bottle, okay? The other side should be symmetrical. That means it's the same. So no matter what shape you used on one side, you just gotta kind of repeat it on the other side. It's not gonna be perfect because we're not perfect. We're just fourth graders, but we'll try our best. So I fixed my line there, so I'm gonna erase that part I don't need. Notice that I am not starting over when I make a mistake. I'm just erasing it and I'm gonna keep going. Guys, this is not really the shape I wanted, but that's kind of what my hand did. So I'm just gonna go with it. Sometimes you just kind of go with whatever happens on your paper and just kind of see where it takes you. Okay, so now that we have our two sides, we're gonna connect the bottom with, you guessed it, an ellipse, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and make a curve for our lips, and this time it's glass. That means you can see all the way through it. And guys, I like to draw ellipses with my paper going to the side. This time, since it's glass, you can actually see the whole thing. So this ellipse is pretty big because it's the bottom of my glass. And notice I went around a couple times until I liked it. And now I can just clean up the edge. Awesome! So now we can see our ellipse. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna make it look more like glass. And one of the ways we can make it look more like glass is glass is thick, okay? Especially glass bottles, they have thick glass. So I'm gonna make another line that goes around the edge of my bottle. So I'm just gonna go all the way around and that's gonna make it look like it's got a thickness to it. I'm gonna do it on both sides. I'm just following the shape of my bottle that I drew. If your shape is different, you're gonna follow whatever shape you drew. 
Okay, that is the shape of our bottle. We just drew a bottle. We are done drawing our bottle. So now we're gonna add some things to the inside. This part is up to you. So I told you that you could choose between making some hearts to go inside here and making a landscape. So I'm gonna show you how to make a landscape, but if you want to make hearts instead, I'll kind of show you how to do that too. So if you are making a landscape or hearts, no matter what, I think a really cool um, addition is to make some like textured dots here and for this i know i'm going to go over this with sharpie anyway later so i'm going to go ahead and find a thin sharpie so this is a regular sharpie it's got a normal fine tip i'm going to find one in the drawer that says ultra fine tip like this so that one means it's extra skinny okay so i'm going to use one of these and i'm just going to make some dots because i don't want to go over these later so i'm just going to do it with my um, you can see I have some dots here. These dots just make it look a little bit more interesting. Like, like there's some stuff floating around in there that's kind of settled at the bottom. And I like to do them around the edges of my ellipse shape that I had. Like I said, it makes it look like maybe there's some sediment. If you have like ocean water in here, or maybe it's just kind of some sparkly stuff at the bottom here. And it just makes it a little bit more interesting. Okay, so once you have some of these, um, to make the hearts, I'm going to recommend that maybe you find some colored pieces of paper and cut out some hearts. So go see Mrs. Hedersheimer if you want some help with that. But to cut out a heart, all you have to do is find a piece of paper that you want. Let's pretend this is a color that you want. This is boring white, but just pretend with me. And then you'll make a, a um, candy cane shape and repeat it on the other side cut that out and my challenge to you is to fill this in with as many hearts as you want you know and in fact you could actually just draw some hearts on here and color those in in an interesting way for this project I'm gonna leave some of that up to you I think it'd be kind of fun for Valentine's Day being yesterday okay but if you want to make a landscape I always like to start with my pencil first to make a landscape what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a mountain um, line so a regular horizon line would be straight across, but mountains go up and down and they're zigzaggy. So the first thing you would do for that is you would decide where you're gonna start. So if you want your mountains to be high or low, I'm gonna start near the bottom so I have lots of room for maybe um, the sky. And I'm just gonna make a zigzaggy line. And guys, there's not really a science to this. It could be however you want because mountains are part of nature and they're always different, unique, depending on where you go, okay? So there's no right or wrong way to really do this. If you want to, you could draw a straight line that goes across the bottom. So you could have some like grass underneath. That part's up to you. And then the next step is we're gonna make this, these mountains have texture. So they're gonna make them look like they feel rough and rocky. So to do that, we're gonna find the tops of our peaks. So every time you went up, you made a peak. So I'm gonna find all my peaks and make a little dot so I know where they are. These are all my peaks, okay? Once I have my peaks laid out, I can make a line that kind of comes down on all of them. And sometimes they'll come down really far. On the big ones, they'll come down really far. On the small ones, they'll come down just a little bit. And this part, again, is not really a science. I mean, this is nature, so everything is different in nature. There's never anything perfect in nature, which is nice. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is connect that line we made to the edge or the bottom of the mountain. Okay, so the bottom of my mountain would be right here. So I'm just gonna connect it to the side. This time the bottom of my mountain is up a little bit. So I'm gonna make a line that comes up to the bottom. This one is way up here. And notice I'm making my lines kind of not very straight on purpose because this is nature and nothing is perfect in nature. So I'll make it kind of wobbly and I'm just connecting the bottoms of these lines to the bottom of the mountain. So this bottom of this mountain was up a little bit. So I went up a little bit and connected it up. Okay. So now I've kind of created what looks like maybe like the pyramids. They've got 3D edges now. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get my thin Sharpie that I used, that I showed you before that I used for my dots. It says ultra fine. And I'm going to make some more texture in these shapes. You see how we created these triangle shapes? I'm going to fill these triangle shapes in with some wig wiggly stripes. And these wiggly stripes add texture to my mountain. So even if the shape is really small, you can still fit like one or two stripes in there. So see how many you can fit. We have a thin Sharpie, so you can fit lots in there. 
in the big ones anyway. So that one I only fit like three little guys in. This one I might only fit two. Oh, I got three in there. This one I might fit like four or five. Maybe even six. No, probably five. And I stop so that it just fills in the, the triangle shape. Ooh, I'm gonna fit a lot in this one. This one's really big. This is my biggest one. So now I have a lot in that one. Okay, so cool. Now we have some texture in our mountains that we drew. So let's keep that going. So instead of the, the front of our mountain, see how this part is just flat? That's boring. So to make it not so flat, I'm gonna draw a wobbly shape. This is a made up shape. I just made that up, okay? So you can do this with pencil first if you want, but I'm just gonna make some weird wobbly shapes. The ones on my small mountains are gonna be really small and the ones on my big mountains might be bigger okay so it's a wobbly made up shape there's no way to do this perfectly just try it out and see what happens okay so now that I have these wobbly shapes guess what I could fill those in with some stripes as well and those were so tiny I barely put any stripes in there at all because they're so tiny but your eye will be able to pick up on the little teeny tiny stripes that you make, even though they're so tiny, you'll still be able to see them. Okay, check it out. So now I have my mountain texture. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is add a little bit of a variety. So right now we have really thin lines. So let's go get a regular Sharpie, so a fine point Sharpie. And let's go over the edge of our mountain to add a thick line. So we have thick and thin lines. And then maybe this, if you if you decide to do this line, that might be thick. It's kind of up to you. Um, the rest of mine, I think I, I just make thin. So I'm gonna go over the rest of my lines, like my triangle shapes with these that I drew here. I'm gonna go over those with my thin Sharpie because I'm deciding which ones I want to be thick, which ones I want to be thin right now. And I want these to be thin. Okay, there's one last step. In our last project before the tigers, we practiced making some, I'm gonna make this one thin, practice making some trees. So we can add some more trees to make it more interesting. This part's up to you. But if you make trees that are up higher or up closer to us down here, they're gonna be bigger. So if I make a tree back here, I, that's so tiny. I'm gonna wanna use my ultra fine point Sharpie and make it just makes some teeny tiny branches. So I could have a tree that is so tiny back there that you can barely even see it. Maybe this one's a little bit bigger, okay? But then maybe you also have some bigger trees up towards here. So if I make a bigger tree like this, it might even cover up part of my mountain and that is totally cool. So notice that I'm just going back and forth with my Sharpie to make the branches. Okay, I'm gonna show you that again. So I'm gonna make a straight line up and down. This is a little bit different than the ones that we did last time because we didn't really need to draw the branches last time. And I'm going back and forth, back and forth so that it's a little bit longer lines at the bottom, okay? So there we go, there's my mountain range. So that is step one for today. I'm gonna post another video later where we will add some color to our sky. I am so excited. I can't wait to, to see what you guys create. See ya.